Good evening, everybody. We're going to call the meeting to order. We can all stand for a moment of silence and a salute to the flag.
that's actually quite good. Friends that are here, you have to stay through the whole meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Not permitted to leave. Lock those doors, man. <laughs> out the room okay uh, next we'll move on to uh, public recognition I guess that's dr. Veneta okay good evening I um, have been given the the great task and honor this evening of recognizing a few of our Beatty, um, A.W. Beatty students. And I'm not too sure who all may be in attendance this evening, so when I say your name, if you could do me a favor and come up to the podium with me. So the following students have been elected to leadership positions. Congratulations to Aaron Bekvinsikis. And if I didn't say it correctly, I apologize for being elected to the Vice President of Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America at the A.W. Beatty Center. Also, congratulations to Zach Smith for being elected. <laughs> Zach was elected to the Skills USA Vice President, and William Fleshman for being also elected to the Skills USA Parliamentarian at the A.W. Beatty Career Center. Also, I would like to take this time to congratulate and recognize A.W. Beatty Students of the Month for September and October. Michelle McDonald for Advertising Design. And Rihanna Yoakum for Cosmetology. Congratulations to all of these students. Okay, uh, we can now move on to board member comments. If anybody has any for this evening, while we're Dr. while we're yes. thanks while we're passing out congratulations, I'd like to congratulate the marching band and the music program on a fantastic stadium review last night. Mm -hmm. It's always exciting to see that. I know there were a lot of board members were there last night and uh, enjoying that. And when you look at the sixth graders and you see them and you think, you know, as I was listening to them, I couldn't help but thinking in a few years we're going to see them up yeah. on that stage. Yeah. And that's really where it all starts is to give our kids a start like that so that they can achieve what they do, uh, you know, by the time they get to high school and are part of the marching band. So great night for the music program and congratulations to everybody. Thank you. Good comment. Anybody David? else? Uh, we can now move on to public comments on the agenda items. I don't believe anybody signed up to talk this evening on the agenda items. So uh, that being said, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes, and that's that the board approved the minutes from October 6th, 2016 work session, legislative meeting, and the October, I just lost my, October 20th, 2016 legislative meeting. I'll make a motion to that effect. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
I assume we have no solicitor's report this evening, so we can now move on. Uh, Haley, are you fine solo here for the students? All right, all yours, dear. <laughs> At the WPI AL Cross Country Championships on October 27th, Ava Petrick finished eighth place overall in the girls' championship, and Joey Bowner finished 25th place overall in the boys' championship. Both of the runners qualified for state championship, which will be held in Hershey, PA on Saturday, November 5th. The varsity football team has qualified for the WPIAL 5A playoffs. The first round of the playoffs will be held this Friday when they face West Allegheny. Last Friday was senior night for the team. They beat Hampton 47-28. to Two weeks ago, Tyler Brennan's kickoff return for a touchdown against Franklin Regional was voted WTAE Play of the Week. Last Friday, the North Hills cheerleaders and Hampton cheerleaders teamed up to unite on game night and raised funds to support the Women's Center and Shelter of Greater Pittsburgh to help prevent violence against women. The girls' varsity softball team held their first annual Home Run Derby fundraiser this past Saturday to raise money for their spring trip to Florida this upcoming March. And the girls' basketball program is holding a fundraiser as well called Indians and Ice Cream for all girls, kindergarten through eighth grade, on Saturday, December 3rd. Thank you, Haley. Uh, we can now move on to the superintendent's report, and that would be Dr. Manorino. <laughs> okay, when we met out at Beatty, yeah, Chris, can you get that? Thank you. When we met out at Beatty, I said that I was going to start something new with the superintendent's report, and I was going to do something called points of pride, tradition, and excellence. And that's what I have tonight, is I have October's. Points of pride, tradition, and excellence. And be, as I go through this again, Amanda Hartle has done a fantastic job of putting this together for us. There's a lot of significant things that happened in the district in October, so hopefully I can get through some of this really good stuff for you rather quickly. Haley already mentioned some of it, but I want to begin with the excellence in academics. And what we have with the excellence in academics is that McIntyre Elementary fourth graders were asked, how can starting a business help others during a recent ELA lesson? Uh, the class welcomed McIntyre parent Rachel Bekelja and Rachel owns Salt Power Yoga in Seven Fields in Swickley. And a pillar of her business is giving back to the community with donation-based classes that benefit charitable organizations. Mock elections were held at the high school, the middle school, in Westview. And the election was held to convey the importance of voting to students and the impact that they have on our government. We also had a peanuts election at Highcliffe, where students took part in an election along with young people from across the country. This nationwide election is part of a special partnership between Peanuts and Rock the Vote, a nonprofit voter education organization that encourages young people to register to vote. Penn State University engineering ambassadors showed middle school and high school students how engineers make a difference in the world. The goal of the ambassadors is to show how careers in engineering and science fields can impact the health, happiness, and safety of our world. Our middle school history teachers, Larry Dorenkamp, Rich Texter, and Joe Welsh, were chosen to showcase their ed tech prowess and knowledge to peers from more than 100 school districts in the tri-state region at the Three Rivers Educational Technology Conference. We had seven high school students represented at the uh, represented North Hills in the CalcuSolve mathematics competition at Duquesne University earlier this month. At McIntyre Elementary, sixth grade students channeled their knowledge of the free enterprise and market economy, consumers, profit competition, supply and demand, and factors of production as they learned during their economics unit in a social studies economy day. With Halloween here, we had pumpkin explorers as kindergarten students at Highcliffe and Ross teamed up to work with buddies in higher grades to perform pumpkin investigations and experiments utilizing science, math, and English language art skills. It was Fire Safety Day at Ross, and the Berkeley Hills Fire Company firefighters shared important life-saving tips with Ross Elementary kindergarten students during their, their first Fire Safety Day. We also had canine visitors from Ross Township at McIntyre Elementary School, where our second grade students learned about the department's canine officers. They discussed safety, trips for tricks, safety tips for trick-or-treating on Halloween, and then our students presented the officers with thank you letters and drawings. 
an update on some of the activities with Project Connect. Um, we've seen students complete assignments in their new fully digital grade six ELA curriculum called Study Sync. We've had students research countries from around the globe using multiple sources and videos to create an iBook detailing the nation's geography, history, culture, economics, and government using the iBook Creator app. We've seen design presentations using the project and creative apps, and students make Prezi presentations and slideshows after completing research on famous immigrant inventors in their social studies classes. We've also seen students research music and songs suited to their individual abilities in middle school band courses and record themselves playing instrumental scales and music using GarageBand to submit to their conductor. We've seen students create digital posters about the Bill of Rights, explaining what the Bill of Rights means in simplified, re uh, relatable language. And one of the big projects that we've seen students working on is vocabulary, where they keep track of important vocabulary taught in each subject and review vocabulary for tests and assignments using Flashcards app. Our Excellence in Arts begins with our fall play, where North Hills High School Drama Club will present the first ever performance of the comedy, The Birmingham Review, on November 17th <laughs> to the 19th at 7.30 p.m. in the high school auditorium. A special free senior citizen matinee will be held on November 19th at 1.30. The district is proud to, host, or to have 27 North Hills High School music students who were chosen for the PMEA Honors Chorus, Orchestra, and Band. Haley talked about some of the things in athletics, but this is the varsity girls soccer team's first appearance in the WPIL playoffs was just this year. Our boys soccer team was in the playoffs for their third consecutive season. And as she mentioned, the football team will play at West Allegheny in the first round of the WPIL 5A playoffs tomorrow night. Kickoff is at 7.30. We already know about our two cross country runners who will compete in the PIAA Cross Country Championships on November 5th in Hershey after their winning performances at the WPIL Championships. We had five female student athletes attend Your Personal Best, a female student athlete summit at Duquesne University. The event seeks to empower girls to be strong, smart, and bold through athletics while also learning how to prevent injuries, improve sports and performance, and become confident future leaders. Excellence in leaderships. Uh, McIntyre Elementary students and staff collected 776 items during their week-long effort for the North Hills Backpack Initiative's upcoming Thanksgiving food drive. Followed by the North Hills Hockey Club's players, parents, and coaches collecting 8,749 items and financial contributions for the Backpack Initiative during their weekend collection at Sam's Club. High School Hands for Service Club and student council members welcomed more than 200 runners for their first annual Monster Dash 5K and Spooky Stroll on October 30th at North Park's Boathouse. All proceeds benefited the local chapter of Make-A-Wish. We also had our high school SAD club oversaw the Red Ribbon Week celebrations as part of the week-long awareness campaign that included videos and banners, students sold t-shirts with the timely slogan, elect to be drug free. The middle school students participated in a Go Orange campaign on Unity Day, the National Campaign Day which provides a forum for students to show they are united against bullying during the National Safe Schools Week. Our cheerleaders from North Hills and from Hampton Township School Districts teamed up for their first time to raise funds for the Women's Center and Shelter of Greater Pittsburgh to help prevent violence against women. And finally, High School Gifted Education teacher Holly Michael has been recognized as the Outstanding Educator Award from the University of Chicago for exceptional dedication to the education and personal development of her students. And those are the points of pride, tradition, and excellence for the month of October. Thank you, Dr. Manorino. Uh, we can now move on to education, and that would be uh, Mrs. Bender. We might be able to in a minute. Okay. I can't uh, scroll down fast enough. Take your time. Oh, I can. Okay. All right. First of all, on education, we have uh, number one, the North Hills School District Comprehensive Plan from July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 2020. Are there any questions from the board members for Dr. Taylor? 
There being none, the next uh, item is the Ready to Learn grant. Any questions? There being none, the High Five Transition to Kindergarten grant. No? Okay, the superintendent recommends, and I so move that the board approve education items <coughs> one through three. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Bender. We could move on to athletics and activities. Uh, Mr. Muhal? I have nothing on the agenda tonight. Okay. Uh, I'll keep, I'll stay with you for Beatty if you have anything there. I have nothing here either. Right, great. Let's move on to uh, Mr. Kelly and personnel. Uh, thank you, Mr. August. The superintendent recommends and I so move that the board approve items one through six. Second. Oh. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Mrs. Reed is absent this, this evening, so uh, who would like to take policy? Would anybody like to? Well, I'll take it. Would you mind? Since I, mind? I sort of have an item that's okay, great. policy related great. to bring up. Okay. Uh, and mine's next, right? Out you there. are. So yep. we'll you just can, wrap everything together. Can, uh, so we had um, uh, our first meeting of the Enrollment Planning Committee on October 25th. Uh, we had about uh, 20, 25 people uh, attend from the community and the board. Uh, I know uh, uh, Mrs. Spade was there, uh, Mrs. Reed, and Mr. Muha. Give me if I'm forgetting anybody. Um, but it was a, 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 a what I, I think a, a very productive discussion uh, about our uh, uh, enrollment uh, situation and uh, our, oh, our planning. And the, uh, the, the recommendation that came out of that we'll be getting to later in, in support services uh, regarding the uh, hiring of engineers and architects to explore uh, added space at McIntyre. But another thing that came up uh, during uh, that discussion was sort of an un a piece of unfinished business, if you would, from uh, our, our process that we went through last year uh, to, to uh, meet our growing enrollment where we uh, you know, shifted some uh, neighborhoods from uh, Ross and McIntyre to Highcliffe and Westview. And one of the things uh, that uh, some of the community members, particularly those, those affected uh, by that action, uh, th said that they would like to see and a recommendation had been made at the time was a policy for the board to, lo to look at where uh, no family that is affected by a redistricting uh, be, be able to be affected again while they're while any one child uh, is is in the elementary years uh, so that is uh, something that I think uh, again it's it's it was discussed but never, no action was ever taken and um, I think that would send a good message uh, to the community as we move forward and, and deal with our good problem of, of a growing district again to let them know uh, that uh, not that we're anticipating any future um, um, redistrictings in the, in the near horizon, uh, but that uh, we do put a policy in place that uh, no family uh, should ever be impacted, uh, no child should ever be impacted twice by redistricting while they're attending uh, our elementary schools. We'll put something together and have it on the December agenda. I, I know when we had talked about it that I have drafts of exactly what you're talking about in the folder, so that's not difficult for us to do. Okay. Uh, I just have a question relative to that. Actually, too, first of all, is it really plausible to do that? I mean, can we sit here as a board and say to the people in our community that we will not redistrict you as long as you're, if you have been affected? That's my first question. And is it really fair for people to have that sense of, oh, I won't be bothered again. My second question is, a policy is made by a board. We have an election coming up next year. This board can be different. And so therefore, if different people are elected, then that board can change the policy. I think it's a good idea, and I'd love to be able to say we could do it, but I think I've been on the board long enough to know Policies were made and changed by different groups of people. That, that's all. That's uh, my only question. Well, from my question. point of view, then, uh, that, that argument would sort of lead you to say, why have any policies at all? 
Well, that's true. If, but if, there, if, why I'll implement you, Why implement any policy if you could say, well, a future board could just change that? Well, because so a lot of those policies that we have are dictated by the state and federal government and the Department of Education. We can't change those. We can add things into it, so we basically mm -hmm. can't. So I'm not saying, you know, I'm, I'm not here to dispute it because I think it's a good idea. I mean, I really do, but... But I just wonder, that's all. I, I think uh, by creating a policy, uh, it's true. A, a future board can always change policy. But mm -hmm. having, having a policy in place, I think, sort of sets a marker out there mm -hmm. that a future board would have to acknowledge and you know, face the potential consequences mm -hmm. of overturning that policy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, but I just want to be clear. Oh, I think you said this, but just we're talking about a particular student who has been redistricted. Correct. So that student right. would not be redistricted again right. while that student was in the elementary right. school. Okay. I just yeah. want to no, make I knew okay. that. Yeah. While they I, were in the elementary school. <coughs> right. So okay. if someone was redistricted in kindergarten, that means six years, seven years. Six years. Well, six years. Including, yeah, well, including kindergarten. Yeah. Uh, so that would be school. seven years. Okay. Now, if they're in kindergarten, then it would be first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So that's six years. If they're already in kindergarten. They're already right. in yeah. kindergarten. Okay. Oh. okay. I, I agree with uh, Mrs. Bender, and uh, uh, it presents well, just a transportation problem. Could tr uh, uh, result in some horrendous transportation problems. <laughs> uh, I think the board has, if we want to address it, has to have a discussion on the whole and policy. We will. That, that's no, okay. I, we, we will. No, there's no, we're not going to pass it, but we are going to put a policy together for vote. Right? You, you'll bring that to the table. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what I'm exactly. recommending. Okay, yes. right. Okay, and you should do that. I think we should bring it up because, uh, you know, then we could discuss it further and think about potential ramifications if we do adopt it and think about potential ramifications if we don't adopt it. Everybody will get a chance to, which is a good point. But I know we did talk about that when we talked about yes. it. We I did. We, we were, and we were, a lot of us were, I thought were in favor of it, but that's, we'll wait and see how that turns out. Okay. All right. I think you still have the floor. Um, yeah, that, I don't have anything formal on my agenda. Uh, again, we, have, we had the committee meeting and we'll be discussing uh, the, uh, the, okay. the, the situation with McIntyre later in the meeting. Okay. Are you going to do well, the and policy? And we'll, you, you want to just the do the policy, too? Policies. The, the, the pol oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> I forgot that she had stuff on there. Man. Okay, so, uh, so we have uh, item number one, the first reading of uh, revisions of policy 208 of pupil medication. Any, any questions on that? Yeah, I, I had a, a question. I, I'm not sure that the, if this is appropriate or picayunish, but... I noticed that in the policy we we make reference to physicians and or dentists and I'm wondering uh, because they write prescriptions do we need to also you know there are other folks that can write prescriptions physicians assistants things of that nature uh, do we need to include those or does dentist doctor imply the other folks as well just I something to think about no I can definitely look into that um, this was recommended verbiage um, from the state, um, so yep. I, I do like to try to be consistent with what is recommended in that. Um, but I can definitely speak um, with Mr. Witherall. He may sure. be the best to ask okay. if yeah. that's included in that. Um, in, it in may be fine. It. I'm just wondering about nope. that. Thank well, you. I think some lang some language about medical provider would imply that anybody who's licensed to write a prescription. <laughs> you know, so maybe you could ask him about that. Sure. Thank you. Okay, and then the second item is the first reading on revisions of policy 813 uh, club sports. Any, any discussion? No? Well, then I would uh, make a motion to add the, those uh, two items to the December 6th uh, work session or second. legislative meeting. This is in Yes, we have a second. I'm sorry, okay. Marley. Did, I, did you say add it to the work? The, add it to something? That, the December 6th yeah, work yeah. legislative meeting. Second. Yeah, this is a work. But, um, move it to these the will get added to the December, December for the oh, second reading. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is the first, first reading. and only. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <clears throat> All righty, and we got a we got a second by uh, Mrs. Spade. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Michael. It appears we don't have you. You did your intergovernmental relation. Right. Okay. Uh, we can now move on to finance, and that would be Dr. Nolish. Okay, thank you. We have mm -hmm. some things under 
the agenda. The first are, is a request for the board to ratify the general fund bills. A second is the request for the board to ratify the capital project fund bills. The third is to approve the budget transfers. The fourth is to approve the payroll for the month of October 2016. And the fifth is a resolution that authorizes our participation, oops, I lost, in the joint uh, purchasing board, which is uh, administered by the uh, Allegheny Intermediate Unit. And we need to do this resolution so that we can participate in that and save ourselves some money mm -hmm. with the joint purchasing. Okay. So if, does anybody have any questions on any of this? Then in that case, I would like to uh, make a motion that the superintendent recommends and I so move that the board approve finance items one through five. Second. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Looks like, Mrs. Spade, you got a few items you need to talk about. I have a couple. Okay. Yeah. Um, number one, uh, contract with um, Thomas and Williamson <coughs> for construction management addition to McIntyre Elementary School. Mm -hmm. Second, contract with Eichels? Eccles. Mm -hmm. Eccles. Um, architecture and architectural and engineering service addition to McIntyre Elementary School and con um, contract with civil and environmental consultants and company for civil engineering services addition to McIntyre School. And, okay, the superintendent recommends and I so move that the board approve support services item one through three. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, do you want to I vote for, no. I understand. I was going to, before, before that, but discussion. Just, do you have anything you want to say for this as far as? Um, yeah, the just Cliff the, Notes the, version of Tuesday right. night is I was hoping that we wouldn't have to have any conversations about anything with additions or um, anything with our enrollment for a few years, but uh, six, element, six kindergartens at McIntyre changes that conversation. Uh, the reality exists. The potential exists for us to be out of classrooms next year at McIntyre. There's a high number of houses for sale in the McIntyre attendance area. Um, it's an area in Shelby Steumann's uh, projections that shows significant growth in the community. Um, and I think at this point, this is the best option for us to move forward to take a look at an additional space to relieve the pressure points that we're seeing with enrollment in the north uh, east corner of our community. So. Uh, that's where this comes in. This is not, and I sent an email today for those that had misinformation. Um, we are not redistricting. We are not moving boundaries. We are not moving students. Um, the boundaries that were set in March uh, were set, as I said at the time, that I projected three to five years. But I'll tell you how long I can sustain them when you tell me how many kindergartens we have. And we have six kindergartens at McIntyre. So McIntyre will be out of space. They have 28 classrooms. <laughs> Um, the potential exists if we put five kindergartens in there next year, and that's not out of the realm of possibilities that there will not be a, a, a vacant classroom for them. This addition is necessary for us to be able to handle the population boundaries of the McIntyre school area as it was defined um, last March. So that's why we are here. Does it feel like the, the board's moving fast? Is it the things that I've heard? Yes, but this is something that we began to investigate last January when we started to put options on the table about redistricting. A permanent addition at both Ross and McIntyre was put out as a potential option. Now, under the time constraints, it was quickly voted down by this board because there was no time available to put those additions in place to be available for the first day of school this year. Um, as I said at every meeting last year, do nothing was not an option. And had we done nothing, we would have had negative one classrooms available to us at McIntyre and negative one rooms available to us at Ross. So the reality is, had we kept the boundaries the same, we would have needed space at both of those buildings. But we chose to redistrict and move forward. And we have a very large kindergarten at McIntyre. And uh, the Ross kindergarten isn't all that much smaller as it's pushing the edges of four kindergartens that um, uh, five there next year is a strong possibility. So when you look at all of those factors, do we have room at Ross for next year? Yes, we have four vacant classrooms at Ross. Do we have room at McIntyre next year? No. We have no vacant classrooms at McIntyre, so if there's 29 classes that need to be operating there, then we have to come up with a dramatic contingency plan here because there's not space available for those students. So that's where it leads us to let's hire an architect, let's hire a civil engineer, 
Uh, let's hire our construction manager and just get the process moving to see uh, if an addition can be a, a reality for the first day of school. The information I've been given is, yeah, uh, based upon what we're asking for, it's eight rooms on the, old, the older part of the McIntyre building. The addition sits in the front of the building. The original building is in the back. It's four rooms on the, connected to the back part of the building. On top of four rooms, the two-story addition gives us eight rooms. So that would give us a total of 36 classrooms at the McIntyre School. So that's what this is about. There, this is not about moving students. I, Any other comments? Yeah, I would like to make a couple of comments. First of all, um, I was unable to attend that meeting and therefore spoke with uh, Dr. Manorino and Dr. Taylor in regards to this particular thing. And Dr. K Taylor was the one who reminded me that when we were building or putting the addition onto McIntyre, there were to be eight other classrooms in that building. And the board at that time voted it down. That's right. And the sad part about it, I, and I remember saying to Dr. Taylor, I didn't do that, I wouldn't do that. And he said, no, you didn't do it. <laughs> that, you know, someone else did. So I think it's important for us to realize when we, it, and it's so hard to do something and project where uh, I can think of the middle school when the middle school was being done. And to save money, we didn't put in air conditioning. But not only didn't we put in air conditioning, we didn't put in the uh, pipe. Uh, they're not called pipes. What are they called? Vents. If we had at least put in the vents, it wouldn't have cost us this much money to do the middle school. So um, I am, I mean, I know how people feel relative to this, but I've decided to go, yes. And I also was very pleased to see that we're using Eccles again. Eccles is a wonderful architect, and I'm sure they will f make sure that that building looks like it, sh it was supposed to look to begin with, and also the engineers. So that's all I wanted okay. to say. Thank you. Any other comments? I would just sort of echo what Arlene said as far as this, you know, this all went down 10 years ago before most of us were here, and right. I, it's, it's hard to, being in the position I've been in three years now, it, I, I, it's hard to criticize uh, past boards for, for, for not, not knowing how many humans would be on the planet in our district. And, and Pat, Pat, Dr. Manorino showed the slide at the committee meeting that showed we were pretty much at the bottom of a long descent when those decisions were made in, in our enrollment. So it, they, they did, the board at the time did plan for some growth, but uh, it just unfortunately it seems that just not, not quite enough. Right, and, and it isn't so much a criticism as much as the difficult decisions that we have to make as a board. And, and you know, I think that, I know I can remember Mr. Hall saying you, you, we should be adding those built, we should be adding those built, uh, classrooms in. So, you know, it, it, it's not meant to be yeah. critical. It's and just meant to be that it's a very, we're all, every single one of us here is right. in a very difficult situation. And I, I don't have an understanding of what maybe the district's finances were like 10 years ago either. It, well, this is well. when we took out a bond. Yeah. These were all bonds that were taken out but, for these schools. Right, and again, and for just for clarification for those that are here, that this project we are not anticipating having to borrow. Right, good point. Yeah, I was point. I was going to wait to the end of the discussion to, to kind of say about the financial piece of this. Um, we're going to use capital improvement money. Um, I don't know how many months ago it was that this board approved a study for the renovation of the administration center. We had funds earmarked for the administration center. I've reprioritized um, to the fact that we are not going to renovate the administration center so that we can utilize those funds to take care of our educational spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so does the, does the administration center need renovated? Yes. However, we do not educate children on 6th Avenue. It's a business. It's an office space. We need to take care of our educational spaces first. So we've reallocated the funds that we had anticipated used for that office space that we had discussed here several months ago. So that project is not even on hold. It's just not going to happen until I'm 
certain that our educational spaces are taken care of. So as we go through the budgeting seasons and surpluses and deficits happen along the way, um, the, the district traditionally places money in the capital improvement fund. Um, at this point, as, uh, as we don't know where we are in the curve that Mr. Yeom has just discussed, as Shelby Steuben's telling us, we're going up and we're going to continue to go up. Um, again, we're dealing with humans that are not on the planet yet, but um, if we continue to go up, the plan is to have enough capital improvement funds available to us that if an addition at Ross is needed, we have the funds available to us to do the addition at Ross. I said, you know, even before when I was talking tonight that we have the plans and the ideas for an addition at both McIntyre and Ross. We don't need one at Ross right now. We need one at McIntyre right now. Um, so the potential exists for there to be an addition at Ross in the future for a, a future board to make the decision. I want to make sure that we have the financial wherewithal to have the funds available to us whenever that time comes. So that's kind of the long range plan of this. Um, I know I've had some discussions with board members and even at the enrollment commission meeting about um, Westview and Highcliffe. The unfortunate realities are there's not space at Westview to put an addition. So that building is not going to get any larger than what it currently is. And Highcliffe is built on a high cliff. It will need a steep slope variance in order for there to be an addition at Highcliffe. So I've looked at all of these things. I've looked at how do we handle um, a growth that could potentially put us at about 2,500 elementary students. And the reality is we need an addition at McIntyre. Let's move forward with it. And if we need an addition at Ross, let's have the funds available to us for us to be able to do it. Because that's not going to be in the very near future. As I said, we have four vacant classrooms available to us at Ross uh, for next school year. I would, I would just add to that, though, that it just, um, there, there's other solutions that were talked about at the Enrollment Planning Committee meeting, and that that, that committee is not a one-and-done sort of thing. We're going we're gonna to meet again in the spring. There, there's other ideas that were broached uh, to look at uh, different grade configurations, uh, potentially in the future, that still would require the additional space at McIntyre, but that, um, and please, nobody go home and write on parents of uh, uh, Ross or North Hills Facebook that the, we're changing the grade bands next year. Please don't do that. Uh, <laughs> but that's something that, uh, you know, th those are ideas that are, that are, that are worth exploring uh, for the potential to smooth out um, uh, the, the need to redistrict uh, in, in the future without, poten with potentially without having to, to, to do more construction. Okay. Thank you. Any other, any other comments? I'm glad that um, Dr. Mandarina brought up the point about the funds because that was one of my questions because we really do need to put our money into that which educates students. And so I'm really glad that, that that's where we're focusing. Um, as I think everybody who attended the meetings last year knows, I feel really strongly about class size. I really feel that it is the determining factor in student education is that student-teacher ratio. And so, you know, this is a solution that helps us keep those class sizes as low as we can. Would we like them to be lower? I'm sure we would. We all have in our minds, you know, the ideal class size, and we probably don't often reach it. But I think that anything that we can do to manage enrollment, to keep the class sizes as low as we can within our policies, then, you know, that's, we should be looking at that, at that way. And if we can also avoid um, redistricting and we're putting the, the plan in the, the, um, renovate the additions in the area where the growth is occurring. If it, if it works that we are able to meet the needs in the right part of the township where we have the schools with the space to expand, that also avoids the need to redistrict, which I think is another important point. So that would be the ideal world, would be to not have to redistrict and to keep the class sizes low um, and to be able to do it uh, without taking on debt. Good point. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so the motion is on the floor. We do have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Me. Mrs. Spade votes no. A motion passes. Could I say something? Yes, you can. I'd just like to say that um, I'm not voting no because I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, Mr. Manorino has really put a lot of time into it, the same as that of the management. I just feel at this time that there are other options out there, and we should look at them a little bit closer. So that's basically why I'm voting no. Okay. All righty. Um, now, we, before we close the meeting, do we come to the section or the time where there may be additional public comments, if anybody would like to speak to the board or before the board, before the meeting's over? Okay. 
There being none, wait, I will. Wait. That's somebody. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I saw somebody else signed up there. So oh, okay. Uh, uh, if you, you have don't to read mind, the policy? You'll, before you state your name and address, we're going to have to. Why don't you read it to us? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Would you like, would you like, you read it back would you like to forego the statement, Mr. Vesley? If you'd be kind enough to at least state your name and address for the record, that'd uh, be great. Ed Vesley, 116 Lingay Drive. Okay. All yours. Um, just have a couple things I'd like to add to the discussion on redistricting policy that might come to the board in December based on whatever Dr. Manarino drafts up. I had mentioned this several years ago, and I'd like to reemphasize the point. Um, we've come to this every periodically having to redistrict. So I'd like the board to consider adding two things to that policy. Uh, one is something to the fact that we will evaluate redistricting in a public forum I don't care if it's every year, every other year. I think it's, it's not in the best interest of the community at large to just say, okay, everything looks okay. We don't really need to discuss it. We're good for another year. We're good for another five years. Let, let me just stop here there. That's why we, Mr. Yeomans is heading up that committee. That's all part of the enrollment committee where we're going. So this is an ongoing basis. That's I understand we're, we're that. I'm talking poorly. about so, and, policy. And it's, and it's public. But I'm saying that for from the time the redistricting occurred six years ago, there really wasn't a discussion about where we're heading, what we're doing, and this is gonna to lead to my second point. Okay, and that is, to, I'd I just like- want to, I do want, for the record, that's, we, we discussed that over a year and a half with meetings. We did, the redistricting. I, mean, you're, I don't want people to think that we just decided one meeting to redistrict. There was a tremendous amount of time- In one and year, yes. Prior to the redistricting. He's saying this should be an ongoing year-to-year -year discussion. Which is what we're doing now. I think that's why, why we okay. created the enrollment okay. uh, plan. Okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. To, to make sure okay. that that's an ongoing discussion. And, and okay. one of the things I said a couple years ago relative to the same comment was that a demographic study, because really needs to be done like every five years, um, those people don't exist on the planet. And we need, I'm saying that it would make the community feel more comfortable if we had it in the policy itself that we're going to do a demographic study every five years because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't want to get in the position where we have to react instead of being proactive about this stuff. So I'm just asking you to consider putting those two items in the policy uh, you ever deem fit. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Chrissy Evans, 204 Grove Avenue, and I'm representing the 6A neighborhood. You guys heard from us a lot last year. And one of the reasons that I was here was to reinforce what Mr. Yeoman said about the policy that sort of um, protects our kids from the whiplash of being shuffled from school to school. Um, I feel that it would go a long way towards smoothing out some of the community relations if that were to happen. A lot of the people that live on the borders of the schools live in constant concern what's gonna happen next. If they did it to this neighborhood, is it gonna happen again? So that's definitely a concern that people keep talking about all the time. The other thing that I wanted to bring up, um, just representing some of the parents of the school district, is there a way that we can have a new format to bring things to the board's attention that is not simply emailing all of you at your personal email because <coughs> standing up here is really intimidating. One mother said it felt like I was on trial. You have to kind of know what you're going to say before you get up here. The first meeting I missed any opportunity to speak because I didn't understand the signups. And so there are there's so much technology available to us now, and maybe, Amanda, you have some idea how to do that. My husband said, can we do live tweeting during the meeting? Is there some way to, to put questions in front of the board or to have some sort of Q&A that doesn't require people physically being here? There's some teen driver event happening tonight. Well, you know what? If I were a parent, I would take my kid there tonight instead of here. So there's so much happening, so much good, but a lot of parents feel like, 
I can't get to that meeting, I'm not being heard, and there are so many things being said ahead of time in all of your work sessions that we don't feel like we're adequately, adequately being able to access you. I, Thank I, you. I think it's great, uh, something for you to consider. Yeah, we, we, I mean, really. um, we should come up with some ideas. Okay. Um, I don't know if maybe moving our workshop meetings, you know, like we, moved, we, we did, did one uh, at Beatty, if, if moving them to the, the elementaries. We had talked about that when I first became superintendent is having workshop meetings at each of the elementary schools on a rotating basis. We, we, we mentioned that at one point. It, mm -hmm. it, it then became uh, easier that it was consistently at one location and that was here. So we've been having them both here. At one point we had the committee meetings at the administration center and if this crowd would not have fit in the room and that's why we moved here so that it, it felt like at the administration center it's an open welcome meeting but there's no room for you to sit yeah. and that's why we moved the, the, the committee meetings here but we have <coughs> talked about mm -hmm. having the committee meetings on the road at different elementary mm -hmm. schools Could you you mentioned too about sending us emails we, we uh, hopefully understood what you were saying but we do coordinate our communications through Lori and sometimes if if you want to get to her first so she can She'll get that to us pretty quickly. Is that was that was that a concern of yours trying to get? Like That's part of it. Okay. Yes, but there's also um, sort of a dynamic that happens whenever it's not just me right. with my singular idea coming to you, right. all of you. Right. But whenever other parents are also able to chime in and say, "Hey, this worked at Upper Saint Clair. Right. I know about that." If there were more <laughs> of a a forum to be mm -hmm. able to do that okay. it doesn't Using happen at this meeting doesn't have to come okay right you. and email is just so singular oh. you know i could email i didn't realize honestly i thought that i had to ask lori for each of your email yeah. addresses no, you just, then email you all right. mm -mm. i don't even know how much everybody does their email that sort of thing but with all the technology That's and all exactly. the teleconferencing and board meetings surely there's something that fits <laughs> more of a, a something a little more current it's a good point okay thank you uh, thank you Oops. Michelle Petmeyer 103 8th Avenue I just have two questions one or maybe you can clarify <coughs> the boys have been coming home saying that the technology isn't working super well in the high school so I was wondering if anybody could tell me about that they said like a teacher will be doing a PowerPoint and it was shut off like so I don't know if it's the Wi-Fi I don't know I'm just curious because I know we're moving towards a techno you know more technology and that's a concern of mine they come home on a regular basis saying that you know Mrs. Smyers was in the middle of her her presentation <laughs> and it shut off like seven times during the classroom so I don't know okay. I just was they don't know the answer so I thought maybe you guys might know I, I'm, not, I'm not aware of the, the, the problem but I'm not aware of any major problems I do know that the Apple TV sometimes will will go on and off and that's something that we do always request that if it's glitchy okay. um, that we ask the teachers put in tickets for and okay. um, that that is something we are aware of if there's something else specific well I'll ask them I'll ask the boys and I'll ask the teachers that that they have this year to see if if that's all functioning well because if we're going to go that direction I want to make sure the kids are getting as much time as possible um, the second question, this is something I haven't followed up on, I'm just asking you to follow up on, is last year my son Isaac was walking home from school, you know, at the regular time, 2.15 or 2 o'clock, and um, a car came up the front entrance, obviously the gate was closed in the back, went up onto the sidewalk, and if Isaac had been a couple of minutes earlier, he probably would have gotten hit. He said they went up and around the fence and, you know, around the gate wow. up onto the sidewalk. And I did report that. Um, however, at that point, this is the follow-up part I need you guys to do, is at that point, um, Mr. Keller checked the video cameras. He was able to track the car, but on the one where he needed to see the license plate was not functioning. Oh, okay. So I would just like to ask you to follow up to make sure that all the cameras are working I mean I know that might have been a one-time situation but heaven forbid that happen and there's I mean there's kids outside all the time up here and heaven forbid that would happen and you know somebody gets hit by Absolutely. a car flying through no, so if you could just check the cameras Absolutely. I would appreciate that thank you anybody else okay. 
the cameras up when you know, we can. Yeah, they get their office. Okay, sure. I don't know if we'll be, who we give that to, but just to make sure that they're functioning. So. Okay, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. When, when do you think you're